You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servant to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one they all began to excuse themselves. The first said, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. Another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house, in a rage, commanded his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, Sir, your orders have been carried out, and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, Go out to the highways and hedgerows, and make people come in, that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of these men who are invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Who would you find in hedgerows? Well, if you went to Ireland more than 200 years ago, let's say 250 years ago, so we're in the late 18th century, in the 1700s, about the time of the independence of the United States, there were penal laws enacted all that century against the Catholics in Ireland. And they weren't allowed to have schools. And even my father, I remember as a child, talking about hedge schools. They had their studies, their lessons, under bushes to protect them from the bad weather, the wind, the rain, under trees, and they were called hedge schools. So when I hear people that are in the hedgerows, I think of that. Who are people like that? Well, people that are on the periphery of society, in the burned out areas of town. They're not the people you invite to your big event. And that's what Jesus said, go and get them. Because the ones that have everything are not interested. (laughs) They're not interested. They don't want to come. Imagine when a friend invites you to a wedding. Obviously, if you're sick or an accident happens, or there's a war, you can't travel. People understand, or COVID, and there were little weddings of eight or ten people. But imagine being invited to a wedding banquet and just not showing any interest. And actually, that's an extraordinary parable for all of the mystery of salvation. The scripture starts with Adam and Eve, finishes with the wedding feast of the Lamb. Just imagine, the whole Bible enclosed in the wedding feast that ideal situation in the paradise, which was much more than just a banquet, it was a perpetual, ongoing, absolute maximum of experience. And then the wedding feast of the Lamb redeemed people in eternal glory forever in the wedding feast of the Lamb, that incredible relationship between God and his church. And imagine turning that down, the significance of turning down God's invitation to this wedding feast. And you say, I would never do that. Ah, yeah, but I don't need to go to Mass. I don't need the Eucharist. I don't need to go to confession. I don't need to get my children baptized. Hey, it becomes very practical. We do it in little steps. And we just brush it off. Learn a little bit more about my faith. Passing the faith on to the children, the grandchildren. Oh, I'm busy. I have television to watch. I have this to do. I'm not up to date, I'm not able to field questions about my faith after all these decades living it. 
If you're decades as an engineer, you're decades as an office assistant, you're decades as a salesperson, you can talk about that subject to anybody. But we could be decades in our faith and we're incapable of putting three sentences together. And we have great formation degrees in universities, we have great experience, we have done so many diplomas, we've gone to so many courses updating our medical knowledge, updating this type of uh, knowledge, especially seminars on things. How much formation do the, in the Western world is available and people avail of? And yet, where's our faith level? I just heard a priest from Germany uh, start a new cycle of catechesis because for 50 years it hasn't been done systematically. Even people in educated society, they're Catholics, they say, oh yeah, I'm Catholic, but their children don't know how to make the sign of the cross. They don't even know what it means. So, what does it mean to turn down the wedding feast of the Lamb invitation? The banquet God has for us. Yesterday we had the concept at the Mass of throwing banquets for others, of being good and gracious. Well, the biggest banquet that's thrown is God himself. He's the one throwing the banquet. The whole of the universe is the scene for the banquet. The work of redemption to redeem us. And look at the cost of the work of redemption. How God is so crazy about getting us into the banquet. And it says he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, found in appearance as human. He humbled himself even more to become obedient to death, death on a cross. We need a little crucifix here. Just imagine the extent of God's love and determination for us to enter the banquet. This is amazing. This is the first reading. It fits so well together. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. What could be more fitting for us to do? What could be more spontaneous and natural for us to be receiving such a banquet? Let's say you go to the maximum banquet you could imagine, the most beautiful wedding you could imagine the most amazing service you could imagine, the most extraordinary event, and you wouldn't sing praises, and put down on top of that, not just the great banquet God has given us in our life and our existence in this world, but the work of redemption to redeem us, to get us out of this addiction and that addiction, to help us avoid this pitfall and that pitfall, to build up our virtue muscles, to become a redeemed creature, a temple of the Holy Spirit, that he gives us his body and blood, soul and divinity. Oh, I don't need to go to Mass on Sundays. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.